Here are some reminders to help you get the most out of your Dive Math 87 CD. First, work the problems with me. Work every problem that I work. Take every note down that I write on the board. Work every problem with me. If a problem set has several practice problems with it, you should work the first couple along with me, then pause the CD and see if you can figure out the next one on your own. Fast forward to the answer. If you got it right, great, you can move on to the next one. If you got it wrong, you could rewind and see what you did incorrectly. Next, pause and rewind the CD until you understand a particular concept. That's the great thing about using the CD lecture, is that you can basically rewind the teacher. Also, if you've forgotten how to do a particular concept that was in a previous lesson, go back to that lesson and watch it again and understand it again. Take advantage of the technology that's in front of you. Pause and rewind the CD until you understand. Don't go on until you understand the concept. It's also important to do all the problems in the problem sets. And if you need more help, you can also do the practice problems at the beginning of each problem set. My practice problems in the CD lessons are different than those, so those will give you some extra help. And also the supplemental practice, many of the lessons have supplemental practice problems in the back of the 8-7 textbook, so use those as well if you need some extra help on a particular concept. Next, make sure you show your work on tests and on homework. The way you can tell if you're showing enough work is if you can tell when you make a mistake where your mistake was in that problem. So be neat and organized with your work. Split your paper in two, right down the middle of it, work problems on the left and the right of it, front and back, and put a box around your answer, just like I do on the CD lessons. Finally, have a good attitude. The best math program in the world will not make a bit of difference if you have a bad attitude, if you're like, oh, I don't want to study, I don't want to do this. Have a good attitude. Maybe math isn't your favorite subject. That might be the reason you need this CD to help you is because you struggle with math. That's okay. Not everybody's great at math. You don't have to be great at math. But you do have to have a good attitude. You have to make the best of every opportunity God puts in front of you. So be thankful that you have these CD lectures to help you with your math and go out and make the most of this opportunity to learn. And I know God will bless you for your effort. Before you start Lesson 10, make sure you complete Test A in the Test Masters. And also you should be doing the mental math and problem solving steps at the beginning of the lessons as well. Lesson 10 has two parts and the first part is on writing division answers as mixed numbers. And so in other words, instead of writing them with a remainder, we'll write a fraction instead of the remainder. Look at practice problem A. Jonah cut a 39-inch line into four sections. How long was each section? And I think that'll be the best way to figure out how to do these problems is just by doing some practice. So think about that. If you cut a 39-inch line into four sections, you'd be dividing it into four sections, right? So you'd be doing 39 divided by four. Now let's use our division box and just do the long division on that. 4 goes into 3 0 times. It goes into 39 9 times because 4 times 9 is 36. And do the subtraction and you get 3 for a remainder. Now you're used to writing 9 R3, 9 remainder 3. What you're really saying there is 3 fourths. If you want to write that as a mixed number, 9 and 3 fourths, that's how long each section will be. You just take the remainder and put that in the numerator, and then the div divisor, that's your denominator. So each section of ribbon was 9 and 3 fourths, and we really ought to put our units inches long. Now maybe you remember, maybe you don't remember writing fractions like this or writing answers to division problems as a fraction instead of with a remainder. If you added those four sections together, you'd see you'd have four sections that were nine and three-fourths inches long. You can add the whole number parts together first. Nine, 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 that'd give you 36. Add the three-fourths sections together, you'd have 12-fourths, which is equal to three, 
36 plus 3 is 39. That's your total length again. Let's do another problem. One egg is what percent of one dozen? Well, just think about it. If you had like a carton of eggs, that whole carton represents 12 eggs. That's what a dozen is, right? So if that equaled 100% of the eggs, what would just one of those eggs or one-twelfth of all that be in terms of percentage? Well, don't you have to break 100% into 12 parts to figure out what each one's percentage is? Just do a division problem. 12 goes into 10 zero times, it goes into 100 eight times because 12 times 8 is 96. So you have a remainder of 4 and you can write that 8 and 4 over 12. Now we can leave it 8 and 4 twelfths percent. Maybe you remember that you could simplify that to one-third. That's the same thing as 4 over 12. Just think about it. You multiply one-third, the top and the bottom, both by 4. You get 4 twelfths, right? So we'll just put 8 and one-third percent. If you don't understand that completely yet, just go ahead and put 8 and 4 twelfths for your answer. So a dozen eggs is 100% of all the eggs one egg would be eight and one third percent of a dozen. Well now let's talk about improper fractions and let's use our examples in practice problem A and B to understand improper fractions and how to change an improper fraction into a mixed number. That's basically what we did in practice problem A and B. These values that I'm circling right now, those are considered improper fractions when the numerator is bigger than the denominator that's an improper fraction and you make it into a proper fraction by just doing division that's all you have to do to convert an improper fraction into a proper fraction is just do division remembering instead of writing a remainder you take that remainder put that in the numerator of the fraction part the divisor, that's the denominator. So let's practice a little bit more on changing improper fractions into proper fractions. In other words, there'll be a fraction, a whole number, a mixed number. You might just want to go ahead and pause the CD and work these three problems and then go back and check your answers. So on C, all we're doing here is just division make our division box. 3 goes into 11 three times and we'd have 2 as a remainder so we would say 3 and 2 thirds. The divisor is the bottom, the remainder is the top or the numerator. On D, 18 thirds, do division again, 3 doesn't go into 1, 3 goes into 18 six times exactly. So we have 0 for a remainder. We don't put 6 and 0 thirds. We just write 6 for our answer. Just a whole number, not a mixed number. Now 2 and 8 fifths, the way you do that problem is just work on the 8 fifths. And then we'll add that mixed number back into 2. And we'll have 5. And 8 there. 5 goes into 8 one time. We have a remainder of 3, so we have 1 and 3 fifths is the mixed number form of 8 fifths. Now just add the two whole number parts together, and we have 2 plus 1 is 3, and 3 fifths. That's our answer. Now look at practice problem F. I want you to show that two and one-thirds is the same thing as seven-thirds. Use fraction circles to do that. So all you would do is have one 
two, three fraction circles. Break each one into three sections. Doesn't have to be perfectly split into three sections. And then you'll shade in seven of those thirds that you have there, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven thirds have been shaded. Three thirds is one whole circle, so you have two whole circles that takes up six thirds, then the remaining one third of that last circle to get seven thirds, or two and one third. Let's do a few more problems. Let's just simplify these addition and multiplication problems. Anytime you're asked from now on to simplify a problem, they want the answer as a mixed number. Pretty much any time from now on, they'll want the answer as a mixed number, not as an improper fraction. So in G, adding fractions with common denominators, we add the numerators up. 3, 3, 3, that would be 9 over 4. And think about your division there. Why don't you just try to do that one in your head. 4 goes into 9 two times. You'd have 1 fourth as a remainder. 2 and 1 fourth. H, 5 thirds times 2 thirds, that would give you 10 over 6. So think about your division here. 6 goes into 10 one time. You'd have a remainder of 4. 1 and 4 sixth. Now think about that. That could simplify to 2 thirds. If you don't understand how it's 2 thirds instead of 4 sixths, then don't worry about it so much right now. Just understand the process of getting at least to 1 and 4 sixths. We'll be working on simplifying fractions down later. Let's do one more on I. Add 1 and 3 fifths and 1 and 3 fifths. Add the whole number parts, you get 2. 3 fifths and 3 fifths is 6 fifths. And on some of these, you can also just kind of visualize fraction circles in your head. And you can think, well, 5 fifths would be one whole circle, plus another 1 fifth would be 6 fifths. So 6 fifths is really 1 and 1 fifth. And the total, therefore, would be 2 plus 1 and 1 fifth. 3 and 1 fifth would be the answer. Well, so far, all we've been doing is taking improper fractions, converting those to mixed numbers. Let's go backwards. Let's take mixed numbers and convert them to improper fractions. And this will just help you understand the processes that are involved. And you should be able to do either one, improper to mixed or mixed to improper, be able to do those fairly easily either way. A good way to change an, a mixed number into an improper fraction is to think of your fraction circles. And so on J, you have 1 and 1 fourth. Well, you're dealing with force here. So 1, that would be 4 fourths, right? You can think of that as 4 fourths plus 1 fourth. That equals 5 fourths. That's how they want the answer on this. They want the answer written as an improper fraction. Why don't you try to do K and L on your own and then turn the CD back on and check your work. So on K, we're dealing with fifths. We could break 2 into 5 fifths plus 5 fifths. That would be 10 fifths plus a 4 fifths would give you 14 over 5, or 14 fifths. And then L, we're dealing with thirds. You have five three-thirds sections. So let's just think about that for a second. Three-thirds, basically you'd be doing adding five of those together. So why not just multiply by five the numerator? Because you know it's going to be three five times and that would give you 15 thirds. Do the division on that, and 15 divided by 3 is equal to 5, right? So that should make sense, that 5 is the same thing as 15 thirds. 
add your two thirds and you get 17 thirds. That's the improper fraction form of five and two thirds. Okay, well that's all for lesson 10. Next is investigation one. Make sure you do that investigation. Do that before you do lesson 11.